of the cool things I get to do in my job is shoot action sequences. Hit up! Action is tough to shoot, it takes a long time. David insisted on everything be practical. It just adds a whole other visceral element. You spend weeks and weeks rehearsing these things and getting the timing right so that on the day you can essentially bang it out and get it done. Shooting the action sequences was my favorite thing about this whole process. analog, old-school action stuff. David and, and the whole stunt team, they didn't want to rely on just a bunch of special effects. Each film I find has something, some nut to crack. And on this film, it was how do we get the adversaries to move? And they were all what we call the EAs, which are the eyes of the adversaries. So how do we make them believable, scary, imposing, dangerous, all of those things. The first encounter with the EAs, I mean, I've never experienced anything like that before. The hard work for us was really figuring out, well, how can we do this? And so we started out doing movement studies. I'd start about there. Yeah. 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 And, just, and then I could start to get off the feet. We had a whole a process of trying sprinters, parkour, uh, exponents, uh, gymnasts. And we did a whole bunch of tests with rigs and replicated movement within the rigs, jumping and leaping over objects. But that was kind of a real big testing process for us, and we spent months doing that, so that David Ayer was happy with the final outcome that it looked like real fast-moving people. Cut! Originally, that was all designed to be on the street, meaning that we would uh, have had to go on the streets every night to pull down and put up our rigs in our dressings. In the end, it was decided that the best way to go was to do it in a back lot. So the art department designed this fantastic city block that we had as a back lot. We then suspended an entire overhead flying system. And so then we were able to have people leaping and jumping over cars, off the walls, over dumpsters. So that was a big undertaking. We shot that for about three weeks all up. Rick. Why do they look like that? Stay cool. There were probably 50 people on wires with 100 plus people on the sides working the wires. And there's a swarm of humanity that just looks crazy, you know? And the idea that you could easily have just done it digitally but David wanted to shoot it and do it practically. We were in it, and you had to remind yourself, like, right, I got shit to do here, because it, it was overwhelming to just experience it. And that also brings out truthful performances, because everybody's just reacting to what's actually happening. The body language of the EAs was a really wonderful collaboration of the physicality of some really amazing stuntmen and actors in very restricting costumes and wardrobe with this kind of blackened, kind of tar look and wearing these masks. But at the same time, heightening that in a way that really wasn't what a human being could do. There's always going to be CG, there's always going to be green screen, but the less there is, the better in my mind, because I think the audience feels when it's real. Daddy, would you do it worse than me? Eyes, ear protection, eye protection. Guys, it's going to be noisy. And then we had a second encounter in the office building. Why we really like the idea of putting into an office building is it becomes then three-dimensional. So then it gave us the ability of having attacks come from all directions. <laughs> Ah, there's the flag again! These creatures, they just go through the doors, they go through windows. We had them coming down through the ceiling, so it became a really interesting three-dimensional battle. Are 
like our art director. And she did an amazing job putting that all together and working with stunts to coordinate all the logistics that were needed for that. Because also you, you need to manufacture stuff like three, four times. The glass walls, they get blown and they fall apart. It's a huge undertaking. David came in and said, squib apocalypse, that's what he wanted. So as many squibs as we could fit in that space, and that's what we went for. We tried to cram in as many as we could. There's definitely some destruction in there. And they had to design things in a way that, you know, if they were focusing on Croc in this moment, that the fight beat that Deadshot's up to, you know, in the back of frame, matches exactly when they turn around. And when you've got seven or eight people in the room all fighting multiple adversaries, then you can imagine the chaos. Ingrid, who's my stunt double, she's a real life badass. Like, she's she can do anything. She's nuts. But they were really big advocates for letting us do all our own stunts, which is perfect. I didn't really want to hand Harley over to someone to do half the film. So it was amazing that I got to do a lot of it. And then there's this one scene where I, I, I kind of save everybody's ass. That was a massive effects thing where they, where they had to set up a flamethrower to burn these guys on this, like, scaffolding. And then they come tumbling down. It's a great shot. Everyone can see all this trick stuff, right? Yeah, why? I'm off my meds. Our third and final major set piece of the film, the coming together of all the ideas that we've had through the first two. So in the first encounter, they've been actually thrown together, not by choice. And so we're designing action that really involves individuals fighting for themselves. So then we come to the second encounter, which is the first time we get a feeling that the characters actually start working together. So then we get into the third encounter, the end. We're into sort of a spiritual world. Uh-oh. Who's this? What we're doing in the finale, it's really that blend between visual effects and what we can do practically. For me, the magic has to have a logic and a visual progression and be part of the world. So I drew upon the idea that's in the DC Comics universe about this character's ability to transport people in other dimensions and to have these amazing abilities to transform the environment. And so how does she do that? How does she manifest that? And, and that's really the fun part for our guys is is designing that visual language. What does that magic look like? And, and how do we do it in a way that's fresh, but shows that she's not to be messed with? So that was a very long design process for us. We have to go through a phase of really just exploring, number one, what fits this movie. The idea of the physicality of their magic is something you could touch and could reach out and grab it if you were to freeze that moment. So in the same way that he develops his characters, we're gonna develop the visual effects in this grounded style that still gives you this fantastic vision. We try to take it as far as we can practically, and David really wanted a big storm, kind of hurricane wind. So we set it up and started soaking the set. <laughs> We're designing some pretty other world stuff that's happening in this movie. And so it was such a cool thing to riff on on creatures and characters and magic and a visual language and have everybody just like, wow. Well, the idea is also like the, because the engine is also, I figured the engine sucks the explosion up as it destroys okay. itself, which is why they don't get freaking killed. lot of creative firepower that comes together to make a film. Whether it's a director, a DP, costumes, special effects, 
it all comes down to a brain trust sitting around a table working out exactly how they're going to do each shot. Action. So everything together, it's an incredibly visually dense film. We burn people, we crash cars, we blew stuff up. It was an epic undertaking. 